Welcome back. It's Monday, so another chance to get healthy with Dr. G. Uh, today we're making something that is extraordinarily delicious. We are making a lentil curry soup with coconut milk. I'm going to first go through um, these ingredients, but for those of you who don't know me, I'm Dr. Patrick Garrett. I have a natural medicine practice in Newton, Kansas, where we help reverse acute and chronic conditions naturally. The reason we are so successful is because of things like this. We, we treat food as medicine. So let's go through these. Um, we're going to start with our coconut milk. And this is a Thai coconut milk that you just buy in the can. Uh, you can see it's very thick when we pour it in the um, pan. We also have our cilantro. And this is about a half cup chopped up. And we take the stems off. And then we have our bay leaf, just one. And usually we'll, and again, we should take it out before we uh, puree it, but I always puree it in the soup, so I always forget. We have our curry here, and again, it's just a uh, curry that we bought at the Asian store, hot uh, mandras curry powder, and it's extremely healthy stuff. Now, on the bottom of this, I also have uh, three cloves of garlic that I've already minced. So you just press them, and uh, you're done. We have about a, a cup of uh, cooked onions, and I already pre-cooked these since we didn't have a lot of time. But again, you're just gonna put a little oil in a hot pan, chop the onions up, put them in there about 10 minutes, and let them get nice and soft and almost translucent. Uh, again, we're gonna puree this soup, so it doesn't matter how fine you chop those. We have about a teaspoon of salt, and then we use a little bit of olive oil, and then our uh, feature here is, uh, I already pre-cooked this about 10 minutes with four cups boiling water, one cups lentil. And a lentil is just a little lens size shaped bean. And uh, you know, it's extremely healthy. It's like 30% protein. And out of all the beans, beans are good for protein sources, of course, but out of all the beans, lentil is number three for protein. And in fact, if you sprout it, it's a complete protein just like beef. So, for those of you that worry about protein content, you can definitely uh, get all that with just lentils. Or, if you don't want to sprout them, if you put them with a grain like rice or quinoa, then you're definitely going to get all your amino acids with that. Um, for women, it's wonderful because, again, uh, your lentils contain about 50% of your iron intake per day. So, they are an excellent source of iron. So anybody that worries about that, excellent. Of course, one time a month would be great. Uh, and for postmenopausal women, that's going to be excellent too. So we went ahead and boiled these. And for about 10 minutes, get them soft. Lentils are nice because they, they cook so easily. And then I have a cup of chopped carrots in there too that we boiled. So four cups water, one cup lentil, and one cup carrot. And again, I pre-cooked that just uh, for our convenience here. And so that in, a, that in itself is a really good soup, but we're going to mix in our coconut coconut milk, and this is very sweet, you know, just on its own. Coconut has really became a really fashionable uh, food these days, and coconut coconut milk is really good. It's a great alternative milk, so you don't get all the estrogens and all the uh, growth hormone in there. But coconut meat is also really, really healthy for you. And in fact, uh, coconut milk just it tastes so great in food. And that's what gives this curry uh, lentil soup the, the creaminess and richness of it. So you can see we just kind of mix that up. And then we're going to put in our onions. And again, onions are going to have, these are pre-cooked too. Onions are going to have lots of quercetin in them. And quercetin is uh, also in the skins of berries and especially apples. And that's why you never want to peel your apples. You want to eat skin on just by organic so you don't have to worry about the pesticides. But that quercetin is a natural anti, uh, an, or natural diuretic. And so in women that they've had uh, radical mastectomies, they uh, will have arm edema. And they, the, the main pill for that usually is uh, uh, Lasix. And Quercetin is more effective than Lasix without the side effects of losing potassium. So it's a wonderful, wonderful 
uh, supplement, but also it's just naturally in uh, our onions. Now we're going to add in our um, cilantro, and if you don't like cilantro, you could probably add parsley, but really cilantro just has a, an incredible taste and lots and lots of flavor. I was making this last night, and uh, my uh, wife, probably at 10 o'clock at night, I was making the, the batch for the show, and uh, my wife came down and was just like, oh my gosh, what is that smell? It smells so good. And uh, sure enough, my older daughter came down <laughs> about five minutes later, and was just like, can I have some, can I have some? And we learned this recipe from a chef, Chef uh, M Miguel Lache, who uh, runs the Garden Grill Cafe, he actually did a uh, cooking show in Newton, and uh, you know my daughter was just like, "Oh, I don't like lentils," and uh, he made this. He had a little saffron. I don't have saffron, but oh my gosh, by the end she just loved it. I mean, she was just trying to get more and more and more, and that was the best I've ever had. So I, I was really excited about doing this. All right, so you can see we're all mixed together here, and not really that pretty of a soup. When I was making it last night, I thought. I don't know if this is going to turn out because it just didn't look as pretty as uh, the chef made. But once you puree it, then it's all good. And so all you're going to do is use an immersion blend blender. And uh, this here has the blade on the bottom and you just put it in like this. You can use a food processor, but it's going to be a lot messier. And so we'll try to make it without pureeing me up too. It's a very messy process sometimes. But you're just going to go through that and puree all that up until it has the consistency of, you know, a nice cream soup. Now my wife, uh, she was saying that she likes it actually where they separate the lentils and they puree everything but the lentils and then put the lentils in. Uh, so you have different textures to it. And I, I think that is an excellent idea. This is a wonderful soup. Very, very, very healthy for you. And, you know, I thought about when we were eating this last night that we could actually put this, you know, they suggest putting on rice. But I really think this would be great, uh, almost like what you do with the hollandaise sauce. I mean, you can put it over chicken, you can put it over fish, definitely over rice. Uh, nice, better, uh, we actually made uh, black grain rice and red grain rice for dinner the other night and this would have been exceptional for that again tons and tons of flavor here we'll uh, mix that up some more this take this whole process maybe will take uh, uh, 20 minutes to cook everything and about 10 minutes of prep time and, and uh, puree in and of course I'll finish this up and then when we come back from break I'll have the completed uh, product done and then we can taste it and see what we think. Be back. So Dr. G, do we get to test it now? Yes. Test fly it? Come yeah. On, girls, you gotta help. <laughs> and it's uh, lightly warm. I know last night I, it was too hot last night That's and good. I kept making bowls, little cup bowls and I was actually putting in uh, teacups <laughs> <laughs> and just sipping it and I was folding laundry so <laughs> That's what I was doing. Well, you know, this type of thing is, is great for vegetarians yes. because there's absolutely no beef products of any kind in here. Right. Yeah, Yeah. you know, and that's uh, our oldest here. She, uh, Ellen, decided to go vegetarian. Mm -hmm. And so we've had to actually, we were probably about 80% vegetarian at home, but we have uh, are trying to make more dishes that are complete. Yeah. That are for her, and then if we have meat, we just have it on the side. We'll have salmon or something like that. So, yeah, these make it very easy. And a lot of times, vegetarians are worried about um, where am I going to get enough protein? Yeah. But if you think about it, the cow didn't eat meat. You know, if you want to be like a bodybuilder, a lot of times I'll have patients that you know, they want to bulk up, and they're like, oh, how much meat should I eat? It's just like, well, think of a horse. A horse is stronger, stronger than anybody, and it just eats hay all day eats grasses all day and so we don't we're not taught this in school but if you look at something like lentils that's eaten all throughout the world <laughs> it's good um, you know that, that's a staple for most people's diets they have very very little meat and most of uh, the healthiest countries in the world they only consume about um, I think three to five ounces of uh, 
of uh, actual meat five times a, uh, a month. Wow. And so the staple of protein intake is going to be things like beans and grains, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, berries. Everything is pro uh, has protein in it. Wow. So Ellen, what made you decide you wanted to go vegetarian? Um, well, I have a friend, and she's been vegetarian since she was three. She found out what was in a hot dog. And so I realized, I know what's in all these processed meats, mm -hmm. but why do I eat them? So I decided to go vegetarian. But now I kind of gave up on that, but like, I'll eat vegetarian at home, but not in like other places. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's hard because when you go out to eat or if you're eating at a gathering where, you know, other people bring food and things, um, it's hard because, you know, they haven't considered the vegetarian aspect of, of things. So it's, it's hard to be probably 100% compliant with that. So that's why I decided just to go vegetarian. So she's a okay. flexitarian. A flexitarian, flexitarian. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Which is better than most vegetarians that uh, they'll uh, kind of be horrified at the meat industry, so they'll become vegetarian, but they're not doing it for health. They're just doing it to not Make eat meat. Make a statement, yeah. And so they end up being sugar-tarians, and they just eat bunches of breads and candy. Uh, and, you know, okay. There's Which, lots of very unhealthy things that are not meat. That yeah, you, that's true. You know. That's true. So, yeah, and we're pretty proud of her. <laughs> how, old, how old are you? Ten. Ten, okay. And how old are you? Ben? I'm eleven. Okay. I'll see how proud she is. Yeah, I'm, I'm a lot older. <laughs> <laughs> we don't say our age is quite the same Yeah, way. we don't. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and you know, this uh, lentils, lentils should be a, a grain that, you, or a, say a bean that you should eat all the time. Um, but especially for people who have, like, uh, <laughs> people who have uh, cold sores, uh -huh. or uh, fever blisters, you know, uh, chicken pox, shingles, because the one thing that you want a lot of is what's called lysine. There's an amino acid called lysine, and lentils is packed full of lysine. And the more lysine you eat, the less arginine there is available for these viruses to replicate. Okay. And those specific viruses require that, that high amount of arginine. And thus, by reducing that ratio, they can't breed and you can't get outbreaks. Cool. And so you can literally shut off, you know, cold sores and fever blisters and uh, chicken pox, shingles, mono, uh, even pseudomonum is all from the same uh, virus family. Very cool. Um, and, and I have to admit, I have never eaten lentils before, at least that I knew I was eating lentils. Um, and that is delicious. And I, I have to admit, too, that the spicy curry that yeah. you use, it's very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really is. Yeah, you know, we make our own at home because, uh, I don't know why, but we make our own at home. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I picked that stuff up at the agent store and I, I, I got mild and I got spicy. And the last thing I used, I, I used the mild one. And this one they suggested using spicy. Uh -huh. And so, yeah, I, I love that stuff. It, yeah. It's wonderful. And turmeric is a natural COX-2 inhibitor, which means it pains, uh, or sorry, blocks pain and inflammation naturally. So oh, yeah. you'd use that instead of uh, ibuprofen or, uh -huh. or Tylenol. You know? So people who eat this way just generally have less pain inflammation and they don't have to worry about pain relievers. Their diet's the pain reliever. Yeah, cool. Well, thanks for joining us. It's always a pleasure having you here and it always smells good when you've been here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we'll be back with uh, KCTU reports with RJ Dickens. So stay with us.